Hello, happy Friday everybody. Welcome to Natasha Makes. Um, I'm here, but I'm not. I'm <laughs> this is the beauty of it, isn't it? So we're here uh, from the Natasha Makes studio, but, but, but actually I'm probably watching the kids dance around a maypole right now, celebrating the fact that the Queen's been doing her job for 70 years. Good on your match. So, um, welcome to the Pay It Forward project. So, as a lot of you know, and a lot of you have got involved with these over, gosh, are we month seven now, Gem? Gem's in the corner. Do you know, I think, actually, this is project nine. This is pro what? project nine. We're Seriously? about to launch project ten. So, this came about because of you, our viewers, and lots of you know this, but we watched you interacting um, on our shows, as we do, and we're like, hang on a minute, these are, these are really kind people, and you were buying things to give to other people because you knew that they were making things for uh, the dog's home, or this, or that, or the other, and it just came about that we thought, you know, why aren't we getting involved in this? Why are we not? Because we are, you were buying stuff from us to then do something charitable, and we thought, why don't we just cut out the middleman and do the charitable thing. Um, and so the Pay It Forward project was born. And so each month we do a heavily subsidized kit for you. Um, and so that you can make and create something that you have to, well, you have to, you don't have to do anything, um, that is used to pay forward some kind of kindness or goodness. Um, and some have been really structured. Some have been very much, uh, you know, so the syringe driver bags, you know, they have one use, right? That's, yeah. we do the syringe driver bags and there's only one place those are really going very the specific. same with the post-op mastectomy cushions you know they're they're quite niche in in yes. where they go but very very useful we've done the donkey sanctuary donkeys they were really grateful for that we've done all kinds of stuff from dog beds cat beds pet beds as Gemma should just call them pet, pet blankets just call them pet, pet blankets, blankets and it's all good <laughs> uh, and I still can't call it the right thing um, <laughs> we've done all kinds of things we've done um, baby blankets for um, incubator bound babies we and oh, we've done, I'd forgotten that one. We've done all sorts of things. Oh, they were super cute as well. Well, they were super cute and there was a special way that they had to be made so that there wasn't any rough touch for um, super sensitive newborn skin. This and is true. all of that kind of thing. Now, this month um, is very close to Gemma's heart. I know that. It is. Um, and it is, what have we ended up calling it? Fiddle, twiddle? What are we, <laughs> fidget what is it? quilt. Fidget quilt, you see. It's not a fiddle or a twiddle. It's a fidget no. quilt. <laughs> um, I know that we threw about fidget blanket. This this is what it is if you're wondering what it is it's this or similar and so this this is it and this lies on the lap of someone suffering with dementia and they've got stuff to fiddle and fidget with they have so people with dementia they they often find it really comforting to have something to do with their hands um, and that's really especially true for people who are perhaps in unfamiliar surroundings, um, hospital care home. It's something they have with them that's a constant as well. And normally with a fidget quilt, which you'll, you'll talk about this now, you know, and the, the serving suggestion that you have here and the fact that you can get creative with it, but you've got a variety of textures, embellishments, and it just helps to keep the hands of someone who has dementia, keep their hands busy and it helps to instill a feeling of calm. Um, so well, yeah, in the nursing home when my granddad was there, they had, you know, baskets of socks where they could sit and pair up socks and ball them, and it just kept their hands busy, um, and it meant that they got, you know, something to well to fidget with, you know. It, it's it's a lovely, lovely project. This with loads of great techniques. Well, this is so. This is the thing, and when we put the pattern together. Uh, there is no one way, right way to do this and what you will have received will be a bundle of kind of hardware bits with uh, maybe some D-rings and some uh, hook and loop and some um, pom-pom trim, uh, you'll have a zip and maybe a magnetic clasp and some sort of beads or something like that and, what, and then you'll have your scrap bag so that each one is going to be different and you can work through your scraps. I mean, you could do sort of stripy things. Mm -hmm. You can just uh, pinking sheer different fabrics and just have them dangling down. Like, there's nothing yeah. to stop you from doing all sorts of different things, raiding your stash, going through your buttons. You've got three buttons in there. We're going to look at that. Um, 
and and then you've got you'll have textures and things in your scrap bags you've also got textures in there so we've got some velvet here we've got some mirrored stuff there we've got some glittery stuff there dog bed pu there um quilted pu there now this this is a fun one i might start with this because Amazing. this is yeah this is a really lovely technique that we've only just sort of got our hands on and we've got some subsidized bundles for these today courtesy of lisa lena they've very kindly heard what we're doing on yeah. well you know how can we support you so we'll talk about that so these aren't in your bundles that you have received this is a subsidized kit should you wish to try this technique and put it into your quilt it's a really um, cool technique called crashing it is and it? we're going to show that in just a minute it's amazing um, so then we've got the bells here you'll have some bells in your kit as well um, and some beads we've got velvet we've got toweling we've got all sorts in here but again just use this as a serving suggestion and then all I've done is use my scraps you can see I've just pieced them together there and then just um, Quilting on this is going to be tricky, yeah. I'm not going to lie, yeah. so I've just done the bits that I can and that meant doing like a little bit to hold that there, I've did, I managed to do a piece, take my Velcro and go all the way along there, but it gets a little bit, you know, higgledy-piggledy through there, it, but it doesn't matter, that's doesn't, not what this is about, no. and it's not about having perfect points as you can see, it's about none of that, it's about providing, because they're not going to be judging you on that, nope. it's about providing something for busy hands to do, to keep doing um, in whatever way they want to do it as okay. long as there's some stitching somewhere just to some to of those layers together, together yeah that's all it's about and then when i bound it i just got some of our pre-made uh, pre binding but you'll have plenty of fabric yeah, sure. in your scrap basket for you to make your own binding and that could scrappy be scrappy yeah. you know that could be scrappy as well i just didn't have time to Gorgeous. do that so I've tried to alternate activity texture activity texture but that's just me so let's start off with a really 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 simple one um, I've done these at six and a half inch squares you can do them any size you wish um, pom pom trim super super easy but there are again just a couple of things maybe just to um, to have care of here and that is that look you can see at some point when you cut it there's gonna be an edge there so just be cautious of that and um, just make sure that that does get sewn in um, you can sort of move your ball across there we go and um, and like I say just make sure that you're not going to have one that's just going to suddenly come undone so here when I cut this I'm going to cut that there so that I can make sure that that gets sewn in as I go okay and then that can be as simple as just sewn across like let's let's not get really tricky with any of this if you want to um pop that you know sew that down or anything with um some of your quilters tape just to baste it before you sew it then do but otherwise i'm just going to stitch across there and you can stitch across a couple of times it really doesn't make you pop any a zipper difference foot on? Um, no, I haven't even worried about doing that. Oh, great. To be honest, you can do. You absolutely can do. So the zipper foot, technically, when you're doing um, something with pom-pom trim is just to get really, really close yeah. so that you don't see any of that bindingy bit there. But because we're not worried about that, we're not trying to hide that in any way, it might be that you do want to do it so that that is hidden. And that's entirely up to you. Now, I'm going to do this, and you see I'm going to go backwards there back at there we go there we are there we are and then I've encompassed that thread twice and then and you might want to do that with a zigzag stitch you know however you want to do it you might want to do the whole thing with a walking foot because you're going to be going through lots of different textures that's entirely up to you this has got a little bit of stretch to it And that is fine as well. So that just means I'm going to pull that end bit there and I'm going to put that up there. Make sure that gets sewn over. And then I know that when I come to encompass that in my quarter of an inch seam, I'm going to get those. I'm going to trim them, but they're going to be there. And that's just another reassurance that I've got those edges. So that can be one block, like super, super simple and easy. The other thing about this is that if there are techniques that you've not tried, maybe you've never put in a zip or anything before, well, then this is a great place to try oh, without any kind of amazing. judgment, right? A really all. low pressure way to give that a go, isn't it? Because 
ultimately this isn't about perfect points or, or anything like that. That's just not where we're at with this. Um, now, I wanted to show you this. Now, this is just a piece of denim. I've backed it in some H640 because, helps if I change the camera, there we go. Um, so this is just denim with H640 on the back so that it's gonna get, have that kind of quilted effect. All I've done is draw three lines and a leaf on either side. This is not about being able to do free motion embroidery or anything like that. This is about, oh, my needles come undone. It's not about that. Isn't it? <laughs> it's not about that either. Well, it's not. <laughs> and yet, suddenly it is. Um, Can't say we're not real, can they? <laughs> no. But this is it. So, um, and I'm just going to put my needle there in the middle. If you want to just have that stitch there, I would... spin around and come back down and you can do that like two or three times so it gives it that wibbly wobbly kind of naive sort of look if you want to give it that it's quite nice actually if you don't have it matching up isn't it and you go over and, and yeah. miss, miss each row you go over that, a few times it looks really lovely you'll see some um some artists do that deliberately yep. to give it that sort of it just it just reinforces it um and again just this doesn't have to be and then you've just got that point at which you're going to pop your uh, your buttons and so you could do this in lots of different decorative stitches if you want yeah. another great one actually to use and i'll just pop this on here i'm not sure if any of you have ever tried it but the triple stitch it's the one that looks like three um stitches side by side nice. on your machine so if you want something to emphasize this is it so you'll see how much wider this comes up. This looks great if you're um, going around the top of bags and you want to top stitch around bags and things like that and actually make a feature point of it. But there's no reason why you can't um, and can you see how that gives you um, a much thicker stitch because it's gone back on itself three times. Yeah. So you can use that instead. Incredible. If you want to, if you're not happy going forwards and back. So this isn't about, are we any good at free motion? We're not worried about whether or not we're good at free motion. It doesn't matter if we're good at free motion. That's not where we're at with this. This is just about getting some shapes onto some sort of fabric to allow us to then um, pop a flower on top. Or a button to look like a flower. Or maybe you're going to want to embellish you see, I've gone a little bit so, wobbly I mean, around there. And it this is a matter. lovely way to use the buttons yeah. as an embellishment without having, you a, could, having a go with buttonholes. But if you wanted to... You could do buttonholes. Yeah. You could do them to, you know, do up and do all of that kind of stuff. You know, the other thing that I was thinking that you could do with that is also you could just put some elastic, lovely. So some elastic on that and you, have the buttons yeah. on there so that they have to, you know... Well, they don't have to do anything. So you could do that. It's just... But so there's the option to twiddle with putting the elastic around the button and back again and lifting a flap and yeah. dropping it. Yeah. Or whether it's just that they're Great. going to be looking at flower. You know, it's just something to, to have a little play with, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So you can see just the difference in the stitches there. And again, it's up to you. I should have just turned it as I went around there, but it doesn't matter. And again, it just, no one's going to judge. This is a really non-judgy, judgy, -judgy oh, piece. A great opportunity to have a play, isn't it? Or maybe you've got a new machine and you want to have a look at some embroidery stitches. You could almost do like an embroidery library on there. Um, would look gorgeous, maybe in different colours. You know, there are so many ways that you can really play with your machine with this that maybe you just haven't had a go with. Maybe you want to have a go at buttonholes and you've never actually um, had the courage to do that. Well, why not try it in these? You know, give that a go. It's all going to work, an absolute treat. And then with your buttons, you're just going to sew those onto there. Fabulous. Job done. Another block done. This does not need to be something that's going to be really um, going to take you loads and loads and loads of time. Let's look at the D-rings. Lots of different ways that we can do D-rings. For me, um, I like to use webbing. 
and you have a certain amount there for you. Um, what I would say is, um, you can. I mean, you could have this coming down from the top with your D-rings in. It's up to you as to how much you want to use. Um, but take an amount, slide your D's over it. Two of them. Two of them. Your double yeah. D's. Double D. Aye, aye, double D. <laughs> you want to fold that over once and then fold it over there because I don't want that fraying. No. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going through three layers there and that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to stitch those down and make sure that they are super, super secure before we do anything else. And if you want to use, like Gemma said earlier, oh, are you using a... I wasn't, but you can if you want to use a zipper foot. Whatever, really. Like I said, there's no rights or wrongs here. It's whatever is going to get the job done, Gemma. Wow, we absolutely. We just want that job done. And do you know what's going to really help with getting the job done? <laughs> Go on. Having my machine... Threaded! Actually threaded. Why is it started doing We all have today? these days, don't we? It's behaved so well all day, and now it's just like, poof, no. Do you know, See sometimes... See you with your charity project. I know, right? Sometimes, I just find with my machine, I just need to switch it off, unthread it, have a brew, thread it back up again, and it behaves. It's funny, isn't it? Oh, yeah. They sometimes, I think they, they have a moment. We all have a moment sometimes. Yeah, sure. And that's okay. Maybe you want to go diagonally across. It's entirely up to you. But just make sure that's not going to come undone, basically. If you want to use your zipper foot and get in really close to the Ds, then you can. Um, just going to snip those little edges off. And, um, and then when you want to... When I'm putting these onto the bases, if I'm putting on something of substance like this, what I tend to do is to interface the back in some way, shape or form. If you've got a bit of leftover fleece from backing something, then just, you know, stitch around and baste mm. it on. It's whatever's going to work for you. Um, and then once again, just popping that on there and making sure that those raw edges are all sorted underneath. And away we go. <laughs> this project is just a dream for those of us who've kept little useful bits. Yeah. And then never found a use for them. But we can't throw them away because they're little and useful. Or, I mean, you know, like me, use. I've got my grandma's button box. You know, oh, if I yeah. wanted to use up some buttons, you can make a whole tree or something out of buttons and you could applique it. There's so much. Applique opens up a whole new world as well there. Um, so there's lots and lots of things that you can do. If you've got some of your steamer seam, then why not get with that and maybe, you know, take a flat of Philip Jacobs flower or something from a K-facet fabric if you've got some of that in your scrap because some of that went into some of the bags or applique anything like that um, or some of the different textured fabrics as well it's entirely up to you how you want to deal with it I'm not going to spend lots of time snipping away my threads you can you can do that she says snipping away the threads <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave them can you I know I know I know I know it's just they're there and it's annoying um, so that then is the bottom for you to then have a little look at um, so and, and you again, could just leave those to jingle jangle, to be fair, and be twiddled with. You can leave that to jingle jangle. You could do that so that was, wasn't was seen and that was the top if you want to do that. Sometimes it's quite nice if they can fit. I Is think, anything yeah. that's going to give it a little bit of texture? You know, I have, I've done it flush on this one up here. You can see I've done that one so that it's, it's all stitched really neatly underneath. But here you can see a little bit more. As long as it's not going to come undone, it really doesn't matter. And then in terms of getting yourself something to thread through, um, again, you just want to make sure that you create a hook or a loop or something that is not going to come undone. Yeah. Um, and then just make sure that it's long enough to be able to go through. And if they want to thread it back on themselves, that they can. That's the thing. So, and that might, I mean, I've got this on a roll. But if without whatever amount you've got, that's going to affect where you place this yeah, of course. in there as to how long everything is. But that's you've got plenty there, plenty, plenty, plenty there to play with. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch around there and then we'll stitch that on. And again, that's another block done. Super speedy today, Gemma Lar. It really is. 
it was not super speedy to put together because I really had no. to think about what I wanted, what I wanted to put in the kits, what we could put in the kits. Absolutely. That we had enough for everyone because your response to this was incredible. Thank you so much. We have put a lot more into these kits than perhaps we were supposed to as well. Well, so. <laughs> yeah, but I think also at the time, you know, it's. I know it's very dear to your heart, and yes, and just in recent weeks, you know, a, a dear friend of our family has been diagnosed with two different types of dementia, and it just brings it home, doesn't it? It's there, but by the grace of whatever, yeah, whoever, go I type thing, and yeah, and I just think we are so lucky. You never know what's going to happen. No. And you never know who you might know that's going to need one. So that's what the premise of this is all about. And just that that little bit of gratitude that says, you know, thank you so much. And it's a thank you from us as much as anything else. And then I'm just going to thread that through so that I know that that is all kind of lined up. And if you want to mark that off with a pen, like we did with the bags the other day, Gem, you can do that. Lovely. Or you can always eyeball it. You could. <laughs> it's entirely up to you. But as no long one's as judging. it gets no stitched watching. down. Yes, really well. I mean, it's one of those things, and that was the other thing that caused me concern with this. I was sitting there thinking, but does it have to be like a child where, you know, you, you don't want anything, they can choke on it. But I think, you know, anytime you've got beads or buttons, if they've got dementia, they're going to be within a caring environment. More than likely. Um, um, so that's, you know, that hopefully is... Again, you can make yours to suit... Um, your recipient you know you may if know you someone know personally absolutely and if not if you're gifting to a care home a dementia care home then you know that there is supervision there and that these mats will be used and loved and absolutely absolutely and these can go you know they can then three thread one back there's lots of different ways in which they can play with those and you've also got the colour with that one as well which I love but so we've got various different that we're piecing together here let's have a look at the zip maybe oh this is a great one because how many people do we know who have zip fear oh yeah huge amounts of zip fear so yeah have a go at in you know fitting your first zip right okay so here's the thing if you're that worried about a zip just put it down like that and just stitch it on and they can just open yeah. and shut it like that it doesn't have to be oh. technical in any way really if doesn't. you want to get a little bit more technical about it then sure fine let's give this a go so two six and a half inch squares one to be discovered underneath which is and exciting then, isn't it look you've got this fabulous print fabric something. underneath yeah a little yeah, something amazing. that's going to happen uh, which is really rather nice and then I use I use tape you know I've never made any kind of um, secret about that in fact we sell it because I use it so much and um, and this is a quilter's tape and I just use it to baste if you've got something like a sew line glue pen you can use that to baste all you want to make sure is that when you flip that over onto there that is going to stay in place there um, I've made sure that the zips that we've put in are bigger than the six and a half inches that we've sort of said is a really great idea uh, because then you don't have to worry about shimmying zips anywhere I hate shimmying a zip zip Gemma it's just no, boring and you've got the option like you showed a moment ago to go diagonally as well and absolutely you know. absolutely so again make these yours I've just switched over to my but now I haven't. It doesn't happen to work. Um, Did the computer to, say no? <laughs> yeah. The computer does indeed say no. And then away you go. And then when you've stitched down there, you can push that back. You can press it, iron it, whatever you want, and then you can just go again and just make sure that that fabric is going to be held in place. I found this so satisfying the first time I did a zip, knowing that it wasn't going to be one of those annoying items 
where the fabric gets caught in the teeth. Anorak. Because that's what that top stitching's for. That's what it? it does. Yeah. We've all had that. Um, we've all had that anorak. Oh, we have. I've been stuck and thought, you get this panic on, you think... Am I ever going to get out of yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going to have to cut myself out of or this. Or the back of a dress. <laughs> oh, no. I feel like right out with a, with a vino too many on board. Yes. You're like, am I going to get out of this dress can't ever? Reach. Now, this time, <laughs> line up your sides like yes. that. Yes. Matchy, matchy. Matchy, McMatcherson. And then away you go in the exact same way. Beautiful. Right. Yes. I love this as a way to do your first sip because you Doesn't haven't matter. got that horrible stress of, but I've put all these pieces together, I've cut them all perfectly. It's for, you know, a skirt or a dress or oh, well it's a little yeah, bit of fear, fabric. It? It's a little piece of fabric. It doesn't matter, you know, and that's the beauty of this quilt as well. If you make a block or you have a go at a new technique for one of your blocks and you go, oh, it didn't work. You know, you can Don't do put it again. In it. Or, Don't put it in yeah, it. exactly. You can say, well, I'm not going to put that one in then. You may think up blocks that we haven't. Maybe you, you know, crochet or do some other kind of fibre arts and you want to put something in. Like Natasha said earlier, maybe you can do some fantastic applique and you want to have a little applique something or other behind a little peekaboo door. Mm. It's, it just doesn't there's matter. There's so much you can do with this. So if now, one technique is I'm going to say is you can see that just oh, because of how it is it's come up slightly shorter now either use a slightly larger piece in yep. the first place that will probably be within my seam allowance but if i want to just make sure that that's not going to go anywhere all i do is just pop a little zigzag stitch to hold that in place and again those things that might look like a mistake can then add texture of course little piece of interest um, and you know you probably won't see it no but again if you want to do it so that it does come up a little bit higher so they've got room to put their hands in then you can you can make you can make it bigger than your six and a half inches that is indeed up to you and then I would just base down the side just with a straight stitch I actually go in a quarter of an inch. Now, don't forget to actually open the zip and get the zip pull actually on there. It's going to really help. Yeah, if that's so in the this way. This is acting as basting your zip in place. Now, you have people that worry, Tash, especially when they've not put a zip in before, about sewing across like you just did there. So the thing is, you can either you can either stitch it, you can either put a pin in it and hold it in place. This is a nylon zip. All the ones that we've given you are nylon zips. So they are, as, I mean, don't go like hell for leather over it. Do slow down. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. No, no, slow down. <laughs> no, you are slowing down. If you down, are worried, you are, you hand are. crank. But if, you know, it's not like there's great big metal teeth there for you no. to be walloping your no. needle into. What I would then say is get your paper scissors. Yes. Not never your best, your best scissors. scissors no, never no. your best scissors. And, um, and at this point you can then snip those off flush. And then that zip isn't going to fly off because you put a stitch across there. If you want to go back in and add another stitch, add another stitch. But what you've now got is a little zip that when they open up has got something fabulous for them to look at inside. Or maybe, you know, you, maybe you want to put some pom-pom or something in there, something for them to find. You know, it's, that's another thing, maybe a little felt animal or something that's attached inside for Lovely. them to like, bring out that's on a, I'm just thinking of this now, you know, we should kind of done it, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that they could then bring out and put back yeah. in or whatever it is. So Amazing. again, you're just building up blocks that can then go together, be sewn right sides together and put together. Now, the other thing, oh, right, now, <laughs> um, this was just a matter of I threaded through the beads and sewed nice. it on, like, I don't need to demo that because you, you know how to do that. But you could do all sorts of things with those. With bells Amazing. and everything else. Now, um, with the, we, yeah, I mean, we can, we can demo the oh, hook and loop. Yeah, great. Um, you could, if you wanted to, 
make that plush if you've got a little bit of leftover, I don't know, H640 or something. I don't think I did on that, but if you want to make it plush, then do. Um, a plush can, flap? A plush flap, yes. Padded flap? Huh? A padded flap. I mean, all of it. Gorgeous. It's fabulous, right? Um, and let me just measure how big that is. De -de -de -de. De -de 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 -de. The beauty of this as well, Tash, is if you were going to yes. make more than one, you could, you know, make several of the same block at the same time and, and work at it, because this uses all your scraps, doesn't it? Uses all your scraps. And that's the, that's the absolute beauty of this, um, is that, you know, we are... We are little wombles here at Natasha yeah. Makes. We do like to womble away things. And um, and so this was absolutely perfect for us because what we're like, oh yeah. yes, all the things that we have previously wombled, here they are. But we do have some of our viewers that are batch makers. They love yeah, yeah, making yeah, in great. batches and this is brilliant for that. Perfect. To batch make a certain square or a couple of squares. Now, and, what yeah. I've done here, Great. actually this is HH650. Oh. Yeah. So what I'll do, is I will adhere it just to one side with, bear with, caller. Oh no, where's my pressing mat? <laughs> you need your Teflon sheets. Oh, yeah, I do. Because oh, HH650 is our double-sided <sighs> fusible, it. isn't it? Really love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you went casually in there and <sighs> boshed your iron onto it, casually that's gonna be a anything. sticky McStickerton it situation, It is gonna be a sticky it? old mess. Um, but here, <laughs> what I can do no is one likes that. just, no, not in the craft room. Pop no. that on there. No, no. And then just fold that over there. I don't know why we're whispering. I've, I don't know why you're whispering. I'm letting you get on with it. That was a royal we, because I'm not whispering. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love a bit of steam. It's satisfying, give it, isn't give it? Give it a moment, yeah. Just give it a, oh, we're going to do something with steam in a minute, like you've not seen oh, before. I'm very excited. Give it a minute just to cool and then you can peel it back and then you can go right uh, right right sides together stitch down both sides um, and then we've got going to have a nice padded flap amazing I know I'm going to go down from that side I think Now, um, a lot of you in your kits, and I think most of them have got them, have got some sort of flower in there. Some Ooh. of you will have ones that you can just heat a plique on. Nice. Others have ones that you might need to sew on. And I just thought they'd be a nice discover discoverable, just taking those edges off, and then we turn that through, and that gives you a nice padded flap. They could go inside your zippy pocket or underneath your flap, couldn't they? Amazing. Well, that's what I did. So I did that. So that when you pull that back, you've got a pretty flower to look at. Aww. Um, so let's just pokey pokey out those corners. And then what you can do just to reinforce all of that is then heat it again. And then you've got that bonded both sides. Okay. Now, if this is going to be where I'm going to create my flap, that's going to be at the top there. Um, if you want it to be a little bit higher up, maybe, then you can. That's entirely up to you. Just trim a little bit off. That's nay bother, Gemma, as they say. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. I somewhere they say that. Somewhere. I'm sure they would say that somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. Um, and then, you know, it's up to you to decide if, how far down you want your flap to go. Um, and that flap will then sit in there. Now, if you want to base that in place, you can. But here's the thing, right? We've made sure that the, the hook and loop tape that has gone in is sticky. Very so good. So you can just measure that up against the length of that. I just need to trim off an edge there. And this is the joy of it, right? Because you then peel back one side place that onto there like so 
and if you've done it wonky like me you can just readjust it put it however you want now in about 24 hours that should be a permanent adhesion but if you are Ooh. worried this is what you will do and that is just stitch around it so again you know you've got that longevity in there all the techniques Oh, my bobbin does not sound terribly happy in there for some reason. Oh, oh it's making a lovely noise. It's got a bit of a clunk, <laughs> hasn't it? <laughs> it's having a proper word with you, isn't it? And it is not a happy word. No, it is not a happy word. Oh, look, it's giving me all the skip stitches on top Aww. there. That's all the fun, isn't it? Wonderful. What's got into you? You know what this is what generally happens for me now, don't you? Is that I load these the wrong way around because <laughs> I'm so used to having different ones yes. that do different things. Well your semi industrials in a completely separate place is messy yeah, than yeah, all yeah. of that, isn't it? Absolutely. So. Well that's made a bit of a hash at the top of that, but never mind your but you You're could put some trim on it, couldn't you? A bit oh, of lace or something yeah, like that. Could. If this happens to you, pop a little trim of something on and no one would ever know. Or a little ribbon, bit of ribbon or something. Bit of something beautiful. Be fine. Right. Yeah. So then, what I would do is put your other side of your tape. Is that one? onto there like so remove that backing place it where you want it to go now you see at this point you can then base that top bit in place if you want Let's see if this wants to play now shall we Gemma fabulous it may or it may not No. Something is not happy in this oh, scenario. I think it might need to turn off on a re-thread. They sometimes just need telling off yeah. and giving a moment to think about what, what they've it's done. done. Absolutely. So then what I would do is then just peel that off and you can, machine allowing, Ooh. stitch that down. I'm going to uh, not do that for a minute because that is skipping all over the place. You're right, I'm going to turn it off, read <laughs> everything, start again. And have you know, a stern word with it, take everything out. <laughs> yeah, we did have a little re thread top, re thread bottom, do all that. We had a little clean of it actually, and I wonder if I've just misaligned something. Aww. Who knows? Who knows? But there we go. Anyway, so. That is what I would do for that. And then you've got, or you will have, when it's all stoned down. And again, don't worry if it's floofing. If you want to, of course, then what you can do is put some interfacing on the back there. But once that's all quilted in, you'll be absolutely fine. So that is another one done. Wonderful. Dun, 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 dun. Now, the last one that I want to show you very, very quickly is this new technique. Crashing. Now, this uses, yeah. Is it crashing or crushing? It's crashing. And it's a ger well, it's sort of a German miss. Yeah, it's one of those things that doesn't translate well, Janet. No, would say. no, did no. You, um, did you know she sent us a couple of technical notes on the crashing technique earlier? So, the crashing technique, and I will explain this as we go is fabulous you're going to have to start with a larger piece of fabric yes and this is just one that i want to include just because it's fun and it's going to give you something a little bit different so here's my fabric let's have jane's got my big ruler still you know how she promised she'd give it back oh, oh really yeah, yeah, yeah. jane i know she hasn't 
Yeah, she keeps shenanigating off with all sorts of things sh at the moment. Sh shenanigating all over the she shop. She tried to take the mic with her earlier. I know. She picked my phone up yesterday and shenanigated she off with off that. She off with that, didn't yeah. she? She doesn't even have an iPhone. No, I know. No. She wouldn't even know how to use it. I know. That's the <laughs> crazy thing about it. I've just used this upside down, so go me. That's um, all right. It's all good. It's all good. Now, Gemma, whilst we do this, yes. I'm just going to do this about eight and a half this way. It doesn't really doesn't really matter because you're going to trim it back afterwards anyway. There you go. It's Fabulous. There. Um, or I could just use, you know, a scrap piece that is actually the right size. Um, this is just a little bit of fun for us to try today. Yeah. Which is going to require me to rethread my machine. It's all right. Bear with everybody. Bear with. Fine. Uh, the premise of the uh, oh, I don't think the problem was coming from below. You know, that's all caught up. There we go. Oh, quite often it just is trying to tell you. Take my thread Stop. out, top and bottom. Stop. Turn me off. Rethread me. Turn me back on again. I'm not happy. Things are afoot. It's a bit like. When your underwear's not in the right place, you know. Oh, or when yeah. you've got a really uncomfortable brassiere on. It's no fun, is it? No. no. Do you know what I'm going to do as well? I'm going to change the needle and everything. You wince and you walk it. funny and all of that, don't you? And that's exactly what your machine's doing. Wincing and walking funny. Wincing and walking funny and saying, no. something's not right here. I need an adjustment of all my hidden garments, a.k.a. thread. What have I done? Uh -huh. So your spare needles are this side. I've got I've got spare needles oh, okay. all the sides, <laughs> all the sides. Um, I always keep two lovely. sizes for spare needles. Um, oh, those those brilliant packs of needles. The, yeah, are the hundred just packs. The thing, because it they? just means I've always yeah. got, and I'm not. I don't know about you, but I used to get really tight about using them same and then the stupid thing is that quite often you have loads of mistakes go on you're getting really cross you try apparently everything ha 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 and then you change your flipping needle and it works and then you really cross with yourself that you didn't change a needle before some things are just worth sorting out and paying for aren't they and with these you get a hundred in a pack so you buy it forget about it you've right. got them now this is Sula fleece Okay, it's from Vlieseline, and if you've never tried it before, it makes a really, really, really lovely effect. Okay, now you can use it with Bondaweb. If you use it with Bondaweb, you're going to take the Bondaweb off the carrier paper. What I'm using, and you want to use two layers. What I'm going to use it with, we've got heat and repair here, heat and bond, whatever you want to call it. And again, I'm going to do two layers. And just measure that up approximately. So you sold your fleece as an embroidery backer, yeah. really officially, but this is a little hack, a little it clever trick. It is a trick little hack it, because, it? as you know, we don't do a lot of embroidery no. here. We should probably do more than we do, but we don't. But for those of you that do embroidery, it's a cold water Perfect. soluble embroidery backer, you know. So amazing. You're going to have two layers of your. Um, heat and bond, bond and repair, um, your misty fuse or your bonder web. And then you put on your layer here. Now that is the sandwich. Yes. Okay. And you can pin that, you can do whatever. What I'm hoping is that my machine is going to play nicely and I am going to then sort of quilt it. Now you can do this in straight lines, you can do this diagonally, you can do this. I did it with a really wide zigzag stitch. Lovely. Which was quite nice. Now Janet was saying that the distance between your stitching lines will determine the density of your crash. Yes. Which I thought was fabulous. So you can really get different effects yeah. however you want. So I'm going quite wide, so it's not going to pull in too much, yeah. but you'll get enough of an idea. You can do straight lines, you can do, like you say, like I'm doing here, zigzags. So the wider apart you go, Tash, the less the less dense it'll it's be. Gonna be. The less crunchy, the less yeah. crushed. And, and then that's the because I've only gone two inches bigger. Nice. 
Now the other thing to bear in mind is that when you use this in a quilt, you are going to have to sew around the parameters, which is going into a quilt that's absolutely fine because it's a non-woven substance that's going in. You've got to hold it in there somehow. And I love doing this with pattern fabric. Could you imagine doing this with an ombre? Oh, it'd be gorgeous. Really gorgeous, wouldn't gorgeous. it? Gorgeous, but it'd be so much fun to play with that narrower lines to get that more crimped effect and wider apart to get the less crimped effect. And we were saying, weren't we, this, this could be used in so many different applications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could use it for the front of a handbag yeah. or something, for the lid, however you want to use it. But this is it. So this is just roughly so that you can get to see how to go. It's so. difficult to explain how it feels, but it feels amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's the reason that you thought it was such a wonderful Perfect one to include in this, in this so project. So let's have a look. So I've done zigzag stitches, sort of in lines, it doesn't matter. This is the next bit, is to get your steam on. Now you can hover the steam and look, look at that. Did you ever do that art with um, shrinking plastic? Have you ever played with shrinking plastic? Oh. This is like the fabric alternative to it. But how cool is that? And I'm not touching it with my iron, I'm just applying the steam. And that gives you that fabulous, fabulous texture there. It's like a ruching, but how wonderful is that? And so that then, I trim that back and then I sew that in and that's something you can really get your fingers into and really, really play with. But you see, you could imagine that um, as, the lid of a, as the lid of a clutch or something like that, it's gonna be a great technique. We are gonna play with this on one of the shows, um, but I just wanted to play with it because of the texture to get it in this quilt. And like we say, because Vlieselina are so sweet, bless them, and so kind, they have given us, um, and because we subsidize these, um, ones that we can sell out at a much reduced rate so that you get to try it, you get to put it in here, um, and you get to have a go. But this is a great one to do with the grandkids and stuff as well, because they're gonna love it. It's magic. Amazing. So give that a go. So then do as many of these as you wish cut them into, I would say, six and a half inch squares, and then just put them together like you would a quilt. Um, I've mixed activity with texture, but again, anything. You can put ribbons, you can put anything you like in. You could put, well, do you know, the world is, it's up to you what you decide to put in. Anything that's gonna keep those hands busy. Maybe you want to just put in some cords so they can plait, it's up to you. But that is, that's the basics of it. Now next month, um, we're gonna go right back to real basics here. We're going to, because, well, because I'm not really here. You're watching me, but I'm not really here. I'm actually at my kids' school. And they're always after fundraising ideas. And the lavender ravioli that we make are always brilliant, brilliant fundraisers, anything like that. So we thought, right, what we will do is give you a little packet of our ravioli, our lavender ravioli kits. Now these create little square raviolis filled with lavender that are perfect for keeping your undies drawer fresh or moths away from your woolens if you've put them away for summer or however you want to play them. But I put them in little organza bags, sell them out for a pound a pop and away they go. And they're always really, really popular for school fairs or anything like that where you're asked to make something. A, it's inexpensive. B, you get a lot of them made very, very quickly. C, they look great. D, they smell great. And they're real, real favourites. And you can put a little ribbon on them if you want so you can hang them over your hanger. It's up to you. And also, so we're going to put together a kit of that in either tulip pink or tilde beautiful 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 and then the next part of that kit is and you'll get full instructions as well by the way and then the next part of that kit is that we are also then going to give you um a half meter of designer fabric with instructions to make my easiest tote now here's the thing the easiest tote is a very very quick make to make a reusable bag it's strong it's sturdy it's simple it folds up really small you can keep it in your in your um, in your car so you've always got a bag 
And the premise behind it is that you either make some of these, maybe you've got some of the half meters that we've given you for free when you've spent over 50 pounds with us, and maybe some of them aren't to your taste, or you know, you know someone that would love them or whatever, or you're thinking, I don't know what to do with them, then why not use up some of these as well? Um, or you know, we'll have some other subsidized ones that you can add in if you want to make more than one. And the idea with these is that you can gift them to a friend as a reusable bag, this is about, we're, we're dealing plan to a friend and say, here, have a reusable mar uh, market bag or whatever you want to call it, shopping bag, whatever. Or maybe it's going to go to the school for fundraising. Again, great, perfect. Um, and again, you get instructions. The instructions are all working out for free. And this is, this is like I say, these are always heavily subsidized by us. This isn't a, a money-making exercise, these pay it forwards. So this should be well in excess of 20 odd pounds. And they're coming in at 14.99 for you for the lavender ravioli and a half meter of fabric, um, designer fabric, as well as instructions for both of those. The instructions alone on these should have been 11.99. So, you can see this is heavily, heavily subsidized. Um, so grab those and then you can either make the tote with a grandchild and then they have a school bag or something like that. Or you can gift it to a friend so that they don't have to use plastic when they go to the shops. Or you can make them for the school fete or you can give it to a friend that's just been a bit down or whatever it is or fill it with stuff for refugees and give it, you know, whatever it is that you want to do with it as long as somebody gets some pleasure from it. Happy days. That's all we ask for, isn't it, Jim? Yep, 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 yep. So there we go. That is next month's. It is available on the website www.natashamakes.com. Pop it in there, pop it in your basket. And because, um, again, they will go out straight away because we have those ready to go. I haven't had to make a massive pattern or anything for those like I did with this. This was epic this month. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> amazing huge this has taken me of my time nearly a week to do um because i've i've packaged them all up and it, yeah counted everything out divvied everything out, like it's been huge um, and that's because of your generosity because you've bought them so thank you for that it's by no way a complaint it's just <laughs> an excuse for us to buy the link um but you should be getting should be dropping through your uh, your letter boxes today so you can get cracking on those today hooray 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 so grab your next pay it forward projects also 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 what else do i need to say gem you are you well, are my my brain yes. here today so i have your brain lord help you <laughs> um <laughs> SJ will have sent out a newsletter this morning to remind yes. you all to watch today, to watch. which is great. Yes. And Hello. also because next Wednesday, the 1st, yes. is the launch of the new Tilda Fabrics. Oh my goodness, yes. So the new Tilda Fabrics, this is possibly my most favourite collection that she has done ever, that tu uh, Tuna has done ever. It is absolutely stunning. We cannot show you those fabrics yet. There is an embargo on them, but we can start to sell them. We have got them in our warehouse. We cannot show them. We cannot do anything. You will get a sneak peek on the first. I will do a little Facebook Live so that you can see them as soon as they go live. But if you want to pre-order so that we can get them out to you and you can be the first to receive them, then that is absolutely fine. Uh, and they are on the website and you can see those with stock images, the same stock images that everybody else has. It's absolutely fair level playing field there. So if you would like to pre-order your beautiful new Tilda and they are stunning, they are stunning, I can't wait to use them, uh, then please do go for that. Um, and then over the bank holiday, obviously keep a little eye out because I'm going to be having a little wander around here and there. And also keep an eye out for some fantastic deals as well. So do take care. Have a fabulous rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for joining us and also for shopping with us and showing your support for all of the Pay It Forward projects. We do appreciate it hugely. Gemma? Yes, yes. Are you going on holiday now? Well, yes. Good. Yes. Have a nice time. Thanks. Turn the laptop off. Do Few not turn off. it back on until you're back <laughs> in the office. A few days off. Everybody else, Amazing. have a fabulous weekend and we'll see you soon. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. -bye.